Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad to hear this morning. Hope all y'all are staying warm. It's been a cool morning. Let's look at our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 7 and 7. Tomorrow's low is only going to be 43 and high of 67. It's got a little bit of warming trend. The sun's shining really good, but this is all going to wind chill. It's been, been biting cold. Water temperature, we're looking at 63.7. It's actually dropped a degree since yesterday. It's funny, it's doing just the opposite, folks, of what it normally do the last month or so. I know I probably talk about it too much, but it's just something that's been fascinating this year. Because back in February, you know, it's up in here where it should have been here. And in January, it's here when it should have sort of be up here. And that's, that's going on right now. It's funny, I also think about the third fog in March. Folks, the wind been blowing so much, we haven't had any fogs in, in March. So, But the Spanish are here. And speaking of uh, a lot of Spanish being caught, we're not quite there yet. There's a massive number being caught like we normally get. But there have been, uh, you, you'll see some pictures and all of the nice Spanish caught. The uh, river reading is brought to us by Sand Hill Seafood up on Highway 77, just past north of Bozeman School, the Apalachicola, Blunstown, right at even six foot. And the Choctatch at Carabelle is a 7.8. Not much movement at all for the next couple of days. It's pretty steady. Be some good fishing and when it warms up on the river. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We got, uh, again, neap tides today. Got a high right there at lunch, 12.15 and low at 9.46 tonight and again on, on Saturdays uh, they got that midday you got an incoming tide in the morning and outgoing is about a 1.2 foot range coming on Saturday it's going to be pretty good tide on Saturday if the wind don't blow too hard speaking of wind the day is sort of dying down a little bit now it's coming out of north continually but it's only 5 to 10 where it's been past like 10 to 20 but today is only 5 to 10 so it is looking better a little bit better at the time let's take a break and we'll be right back Okay, welcome back. Let's start off with our pictures and all. We're going to, our first one is going to be sort of a sentimental one, and it's, it's really good. I, I saw it. It was one of those memories that pop up on Facebook. Not mine, It's not mine, but Jerry Shores had it. And that, but before I get to it, I want to talk about we've got this organization like PETA that, that thinks we all uh, hate animals and shoot animals and all, but there's so many people, outdoorsmen, that really appreciate animals, and, and, and you know, sure, we're taking them for food and all, but the farmers especially, cattle farmers and all, that get attached to their animals and all, they really take care of them, they might do that, uh, and uh, they never get recognition from uh, the, for ethical treatment. And here, but here's a case in point right here. I'm, I'm gonna show this to you. Let's look at a picture first. This little girl right here, is, and, this, and this cow, okay? It's a little simple picture there. It comes from Jerry Shores. He did it as a memory flashback, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it, okay? This is it's just really good. One of my all-time favorite pictures. This cow loved Anne Marie. They had a special friendship. We retired her ear tag number after she passed. Best cow ever. I wrote this the day I lost her. All right, here's a poem he wrote. I lost my best cow today. I'm broke hearted and don't have much to say. She loved a cookie. She loved a brush. Last to leave me, never in a rush. If it's true about heaven, and it's like they say, I'll be standing in clover brushing number 22 one day. And I thought, what a classic. Uh, what a classic uh, poem there for, for the love of an animal. We're going to get to something a little bit later about that too. But now let's go to something really, really sweet, really nice, really kind to something ugly, okay? Check this out. Robert Scarabin sent me this. <laughs> he said, Apalachicola, up the top, Apalachicola has done the same thing Port St. Joe did with boat ramp fees. I agree with you, this is wrong, Robert. And here it is, folks, down in Apalachicola, notice the boaters, Pay ramp fee here, launch fee. City residents, zero. County residents, zero. Everybody else, 10 bucks. Okay, and that's the city of Apalachico resolution number whatever. And it tells you how to do it. And uh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna sit right here and tell you, that is wrong. That ain't right. I get, I just get so uh, angered at this, not, not deep anger, but it's just because it is flat out taking advantage of the outdoor people and it, it, it's, it's prejudicial to us as, as boat owners, and, and, and it's, just, it's wrong. I'm going on, you know how I feel. It, it's just flat out wrong. 
And if I practice color do it, I've been here you know, giving St. Joe folks a hard time, the city commission. Now the St. Joe people, if you go to that practice color, you're going to have to pay too. And it's not it's not right for either city. City of uh, Mexico Beach, St. Joe, and Apalachicola. That's that's wrong. And and uh, I wish uh, you you'd have a uh, look at it differently. That, that's just wrong. Okay, this is a neat story. This is Minta Sandlin Harbison. I, I remember Minta well. I've known Minta since she was a little girl. And the reason I know because she and my son were boyfriend and girlfriend at Moet Junior High. I mean, one of those little letter writing kind of things. She's always been cute and all. And uh, they own Los, she and her husband uh, own Los Antojitos restaurant. They just moved over to uh, right there in St. Andrew. If you know St. Andrew well, the history is a lake right behind there <clears throat> called Lake Ware, which is named after the original family settled, the Ware family. Y'all see this right here? This was caught in that lake. That's no kidding now. That Jack Crevel was caught right there behind the restaurant and meant to the hole and get uh, she's still cute, isn't she? But anyway, she's she's there a lot, and uh, they have two sons that uh, go to Bay High. But that was caught and released in, in Lake Ware. All right, let's move on. I right, got, got some turkeys here. How about Garrison Glass? And we got a good one here. Uh, hats off to Jay Scott and Jack Edenville for taking this kid hunting. Very good. Danny Shore sent that. And uh, down in Carabelle, Captain Randy Josie from Sea Wolf Charters. Took our buddy Craig up river fishing. And you see, that's a, that's a great thing about it. You get out of the wind, even though it's windy a lot today, and yesterday, you can get out of the wind and go up these rivers, and that's some, that's some nice fishing down there. Thank you, Captain Kim, for sending that. How about, we talked about the sheep head. The bite was great. All right, the Bailey Bridge. Look at that mess of a mullet and a sheep head. Good job. Uh, Peter sent that into Panama City Fishing. Okay, here's a... A local shot at the end of the hunting season. Check out this game camera. It was put up and the game was, folks, they're still eating. So be aware of that. They still want to eat, especially, but that's, that's one game camera in one location. We can't tell you where it is, but that's, uh, that's nice. We were up in Tennessee to visit the kids and all. Here, I sent this Saturday, it snowed up there. Uh, to all my spring breaking turkey hunting, pompano fishing friends back home, our Tennessee visit just had an unexpected interruption and folks, it snowed on us. Look at that snow. That's uh, Mason and, and Whitney. And we just had a wonderful visit with them. But see that snow coming down? I'm not used to snow. And it was fascinating. Look at that. Look at that's their house. And look at the snow all over the place. It came in that morning. Caught everybody by surprise because we didn't have, we don't have reception up there in those hills and valleys and all. And it's, they don't have cable TV. So all of a sudden it started snowing. But the day before, this is about 500 yards from their house. Look at the day before. Look at all the turkeys. Now, they're the same season we are. They got a youth hunt uh, this weekend. I will stop the car and let these, there was three gobblers walk across the road. Ain't that amazing? I thought it was fascinating. All right, Robert David Whitfield. They, they were on the show last week with Hunt Fish Share. This is, he, over the weekend, he went, he went hunting, turkey hunting, and uh, ran across this. Folks, that is a huge rattlesnake. Now, David hunts a lot. He knows what to look for, but. Look at the head on that snake. Can you see the head on that rattlesnake? That is a big head right there. Okay, move on. Some more spring breaking. Some of the former students, Brandon Derby, Taylor Jones. She, if you remember right, they, she's at college, University of Florida now. Came home for spring break, and her mama and daddy took her fishing. Ain't that cool? Scott Gladden came home fishing with his dad. Look at the Spanish mackerel in St. Andrew Bay. We told you they were biting. And Josh Miller, Josh Miller and Dad Barry Miller. Barry watched the show every morning. Josh, one of our former students, he went pheasant hunting and quail hunting. Great day in the woods with Dad. And nice, nice hunting right there. Good job. Uh, a couple more pictures. And how about in San Andrew Bay? Jake and Dylan had a little fun on the white caps. Jason Hewitt sent that. Taking a kid, that's one of the fun fishing they can do. Okay, we're gonna take a break. I got, some, let's see, I got, Oh, I got one too, but before I take a break, let's look at this one. What no seams do during the winter. They grind, they grind their teeth. You know, they're not bad in the winter, but boy, spring, when that weather warms up, you're going to see them right now, but I just thought that was funny. Okay, we're going to take a break now. Okay, folks, working on this, I got Padre Mike. You know, we were talking the other day about uh, when I just had his wondering thoughts from sitting in a tree stand about the pine cones, having them going to make a tree and all that. One of the things I thought about 
you know, with, with, well, we're going to be able to see our dogs in heaven. And uh, Jerry Shores wanted to see, he could see his cows. So I'm going to, so Father Mike, Padre Mike sent me this video right here. And we're going to see if we can get it started on, okay. Uh, which we can't. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to, okay. Let's see. Now, it's on airplay. We may or may not, okay, watch this right here. We're going to get it started. Okay, okay, here we go. We think, all right, our dog waiting for his owner because it's been, it's been out a long time, to, and he's all of a sudden recognizes his, okay, comes back home, and here we go. <laughs> He's happy to see him. Now, isn't that, wasn't that special? Now, that's the unconditional love of a dog, and why so many of us love dogs and all. Thank you, uh, Father Mike, for sending that to me, a nice email. That, that really was special. That, uh, it, just, it just goes to show you, uh, you know, what, and a lot of y'all experience that, and, and the love of an animal and all. I thought that's cute. I don't, I, there's so much stuff on YouTube, and a lot of great stuff on YouTube, but I sort of have to, I don't show a lot of it because I like to keep everything in this area, but when I get something like that, that that's some quality stuff there. So. Thank you for sending that. So uh, maybe we'll get to see our animals in heaven, hopefully. We, he's going to send us more information on that later. Okay, now, we're talking about uh, advertising. We're going to go from, from, you know, seeing that. I just want to mention this about our advertisers, how, how well they're doing, how, how thankful we all are. I noticed on that RV connection, uh, they took that Destin uh, RV show. Of course, they advertise in other stations, but they advertise here a lot. And but they took out 35 RVs over there to Destin. Folks, they sold 23 out of 35 RVs. That, that's a record for them. Uh, and I'm so proud of them. I know that uh, some of y'all, some of the viewers and all were able to get some, but also Brad Stevens had a record month in February and he does a lot of advertising with us on Panhandle Outdoors. And I want you to read this one right here. I'm gonna uh, let you read this one, okay? This is from Wayne Rosales at Sand Hill Seafood, just that bottom line right there. I asked him how he was doing. He said, going great. He said, last Saturday was best day yet. And I ran the numbers from before I went on your show and after. We we're up 35%. And that is a great testimonial on advertising with us. And so that's why I ask you, it's not that we're trying to, uh, basically, we're just trying to help a lot of people doing it. We have young people on the show. We have small businesses. So if you want to advertise your small business on Panhandle Outdoors, we'd love to talk to you about it. I, th I think it's a great opportunity for you to increase your business and get some visibility. So I just wanted to, uh, don't take my word for it. Take their word for it because it's, it's working. All right, let's move on. I wanted to, uh, don't forget, Saturday morning, Rick Corley will be at West Marine from about 930 to 1230, sort of informal uh, boating clinic. He's not going to be talking all, but if you have any questions, come in there and talk to Rick and ask him any kind of questions on boating or anything that you, you may have. It'll be an excellent time to do it. It'll be from 930. For you out-of-towners, it's going to be, that's on here on 23rd Street, uh, the West Marine there, and I appreciate them uh, having Captain Rick up there to talk about it. It's, a, it's a, one of those, again, win-win situations. Now, the also, the FWC is doing this lionfish study. They're wrapping it up. I think I've got the information on here. Basically, the lionfish study is about you know where they where you could get all kind of free things if you brought in 100 lionfish, you get this or 200 lionfish. I know it's on a small group of our audience, so I don't spend a lot of time on it, mainly for the divers. And they're trying to get rid of those lionfish. And folks, everybody I talk to that goes underwater, they're saying they're all over the place. I, I don't do any diving, but I can certainly take their word for it because you know they're there. So they're going to revamp the program. I personally don't, you know, you know, trying to just kill so many things or get rid of them. 
a man doing that a lot of time is not it, it doesn't work that well on the other hand the hunting hogs at night is sort of exploded if you'll let me use that term because i talked to a guy yesterday he's going up in georgia with his night vision if you remember uh, the muddy rivers outfitters over there uh, paul and his and his son was doing it you know four or five they started it really and now a lot of other folks are getting these night visions and these farmers uh, they're estimating uh, South Georgia is as bad as the Florida Panhandle as far as hogs getting out of there doing damage to crops. If you have like a 300 acre farm, they're saying it will do about $150,000 worth of your planted crops. The hogs can do that. And I was talking to a guy yesterday, uh, and he, Scotty French, and he's doing it now. And, and what happens, they'll get three or four hogs, and, what, and they'll do it the same way. They'll get three, three or four guys with the guns. And they'll all shoot at one, two, three, shoot, and 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 they'll shoot them, and then the hogs scatter. But they're all over the place. So hog hunting is, is legal doing it that way. Make sure you get, of course, permission from the landowner. But you can't do that now. And uh, make, make sure when you're hunting at night that you're doing it the right way and obeying the loop. But the, the, the uh, line fish and the hogs are two things that really just boom, exploded as far as uh, not being able to really control them. So. Uh, I know a lot of people, I saw, I saw the other night where a guy had, here locally had killed, I think they killed 12 hogs and he just took them by the, uh, put on Facebook, if anybody wants my hog meat, uh, just text me and you can pick up the hogs down at the deer shack or whatever. So that's, that's how, how bad they are now. Let's take our final break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fish and game time for today. Brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers, 3.39 to 5.39 this morning and this afternoon, 4.01 to 6.01. Don't forget tomorrow about all the big giveaways we'll be having. This oyster outreach program being put on by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation. Wayne Rosales sent this to me. It's pretty long. You see the memo here. You can go online to FWC and look for the oyster outreach. But basically, they're trying to get a working committee together for how to, you know, how, how to, you know, some ideas on how to keep the oyster population strong and different materials and all you can use. You can, I scroll through it. I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but it's a working group. And if you're interested, sort of get in touch with them. Then they're going to put a meeting together. Uh, an evening time from 6 to 8.30 has been selected. And they don't know the date yet. They're going to wait and hear from people. Respond. They've got to respond uh, soon, okay? The meeting date will be selected, okay? So uh, they're trying to do good on that. So, now, I want, also want to mention, uh, oh, I have to tell you this quick story. The, the world as, as we know it now is going to has changed drastically because of something I saw recently. I, I had to take a double take and make sure I saw what I thought I saw, and I did see what I thought I saw. And what it was, and it was scary, and it, I'm going to pass it on to you so you can be aware of it. I saw an elderly person texting and driving. Let me repeat. I saw an elderly person texting and driving. You know, so it's going, things are it's bad now. I actually, I saw, uh, you can now identify the car when it starts going back and forth. It was on Highway 77, sort of in front of Walmart there in Lynn Haven. And I saw the car sort of going back and forth. And so here I am thinking, you know, prejudging, here's a, one of these crazy teenagers, uh, inexperienced driving, because they're, they're real bad about it. I come up, uh, drive up and look over there. It was an elderly lady, folks, she was doing this. And I about fell out of my truck. And I said, oh, oh no, this can't be true. So be aware. And I came up with a red light, and funny, and uh, she was ahead of me in a red light, and everybody went forward, and she was still sitting there. <laughs> and that was, you know, so here it is. So be aware that uh, elderly people now are texting and driving. I, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but uh, it, it's, it's scary. And it, it, it is rampant what's going on. So just be aware, distracted driving, and, and there's some, some things that happen on it. So be aware of the outdoorsman. Uh, that's going to happen to to you. And if, I, I was I honestly, after I saw that, I did get scared. I said, "Can you imagine now?" Because uh, that we're going to have some accidents with that. Now, I want to cover this real quick. Chester's Coast Chester's boat ramp etiquette. Okay, boat ramp behavior. It's going to start warming up, and you're going to start seeing all of a sudden you're going to see boats all over the place, and these ramps are going to be really crowded. I don't know about the one charge ten dollars for everybody. I don't know how crowded they're going to be, but. The others are going to be crowded. And there's a certain thing about etiquette and the behavior that you want to have at a boat ramp. I was writing down some notes last night. First of all, have your boat ready. That's number one. We've talked about that, and I'd go in and I'd tell a 10 minute story to my students in the past about having, you know, getting everything from your truck inside the boat and ready so when you pull up, it's, you know, 
and so many people, you know, put them back down to the ramp and then start putting stuff in. If that's getting better, honestly, it's getting better. I do a little survey every year in my head, and it's gotten better, but still some folks, uh, especially coming from out of town and all, doing it. Good. Number two, go to the side of the ramp, not in the middle. Most ramps now, you can put two boats in, so uh, you have a boat here and a boat here. So don't go right down the middle, okay? Try to go to the side. If you're not good enough on backing up, then practice till you get good enough to backing it up and controlling it. If you don't control that boat trailer, that boat trailer will control you. So practice on that. Number three, <clears throat> or number, okay, number three, have someone, okay, when, when you get in the water, have someone either in the boat, a lot of folks are just having someone else in the boat or have someone holding the rope as you, you know, don't, don't go down there and stop and get out and all kinds of stuff. Just back it in, let the boat slide out and they pull it out and you know, get on out of the way and pull on up. Now, I'm talking about, you know, like the scallop situation and, and those kind of, with a lot of people. Number three, or number four, visit later. <laughs> and I'm bad about this. I want, to, I want to talk to a lot of people. Hey, how's it going? Are you having a look? And I'm really, we can visit later or visit away from the boat ramp. Don't stand there by your truck and talking to people and all that. That's really one of my big ones. Uh, I'm bad about that. Number five, be respectful. Uh, there are going to be some people uh, inexperienced and be willing to help. <clears throat> I, I, I use this term, I'm going to run out of time, I use this term, uh, the folks from Georgia. And I can say that because we've got kin folks from Georgia and, uh, and my family came down through Georgia. They, they're inexperienced a lot of times. And I'm talking about down in the St. Joe area and, or, and they're coming down here and they want to have a good time to be patient with them, be willing to help them. A lot of times they'll come at an angle and but be patient and, and try to help them out. And uh, at times you might even need to back it up for them. Uh, number seven, uh, don't tie it to another boat. <laughs> okay, I've seen, I, believe it or not, I've seen people do that. You back it up and there's a boat over there. I just, let me just tie to you. You don't do that. Now, if, they, if you're talking to them and all and you, and you, and you ask them, I guess that's going to be okay. But, and uh, also when you park your trailer, leave room for other people. Don't come in at an angle like that. Park your trailer and so you can back it up and next to you, they got room, okay? I've run out of time. Thank you all so much for watching our show, Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership. Be sure and do something good today for your fellow man. Have a great day and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.